Here is the very interesting Excel test question where you need to calculate the first day of the next month. One of the manufacturing plants in Houston is using Microsoft Excel to schedule their work. Which formula should scheduler use to calculate the first day of next month? You are presented with today's date, which is February 10th of 2023, and you have four different choices for the formula. Choice A, a month with the parameters a2, comma 0, plus 1. Choice B, using date formula. Choice C, using date formula, but with different arguments. And then last but not least, choice D, E months with the argument A2. Do you know the answer? Take a close look, as the answer to this question may not be obvious. Ready or not, I am moving forward on my end to simulate this scenario in Microsoft Excel to show you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Here in Excel, we have current date, February 10th of 2023 in the cell A2. And I believe the correct formula here is E month with the following arguments. Let's first understand the end of month's formula because I believe that it leads us to the correct solution. And if you see closely, end of month returns a serial number of the last day of the month before or after special number of months. The first argument is the start date. And then the second argument is the number of month. If we pick the start date as today's date and then say zero as the end of the day of the current month, it will return us the last day in February, which would be February 28th of 2023. To get to the 1st of March, we need to add plus one to the result of this formula. So I believe the correct answer here is choice A, end of month, argument A2, zero as the month, plus one. What's interesting, end of month formula can also accept negative arguments. For example, if for a month we will put minus one, it will get us to the previous month, which was January. And by adding plus one, we got to the first of the current month. But if we remove plus one, we get to the January 31st of 2023. And if we use positive arguments, for example, plus one, or we don't need to specify the plus, just one, it will get us to the last day of the next month, which would be March 31st of 2023. Do you have any other uses of end of month formula besides scheduling? Please make sure to share in comments. Here's an amazing question to test your knowledge of Microsoft Excel features. You're presented with the set of data, which shows industry and number of people employed. Data table shows Texas employment in five key industries. And you need to determine the correct Excel feature used to display the percentage employed column. You have four different choices. Choices A, pie chart. Choice B, stacked bar chart. Choice C, advanced conditional formatting, and choice D, bar chart. Do you know the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. You typically get no more than 5 to 10 seconds to answer these types of questions on a test. On my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to share in comments. I believe that the correct answer here is choice C, advanced conditional formatting. And it is advanced because it is conditional formatting with data bars. Conditional formatting with data bars is a feature in Microsoft Excel that allows users to quickly visualize the relative size of values in the range of cells. It uses color code bars to represent the relative size of each value in the range, making it easier to compare values at a glance. Data bars can be used to highlight the values that are above or below a certain threshold, or to compare values across different categories. Now, let me share with you step-by-step -step instructions on how you can solve this challenge on the test. The first step is to analyze the data. What we see here is that we have data broken down by the industry. We have information technology, business services, education and health, leisure and hospitality, as well as manufacturing and number of employed people in each industry. So to calculate percentage of employed people using advanced conditional formatting with data bars, 
we need to create new column and format the title so the title matches other titles in this data table. In the next step, we need to calculate the values to represent percentage of employed people. We need to calculate total using the sum formula in Excel. In the next step, we need to format the values as a percentage using percentage data type. Then we select newly calculated values and on Home tab click Conditional Formatting. We point to the data bars and then click to either Solid Field or Gradient Field. In our case, it is a solid fill. Do you have a better way to solve it? Please make sure to share your step-by-step -step instructions in comments. Here's an interesting Microsoft Excel test question, which tests your knowledge of Excel formulas. You need to show how to add current date and time in Microsoft Excel using formula and then format it as long date. Do you know how to do it? Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the formula. And I am going to move forward and show you the solution. In fact, the solution is very simple. All you need to do is type in the now function. Now function returns the date and time in the standard format. To format it as long date, you need to navigate to the Home Ribbon tab and in the Number Format section, select the long date. Did you figure it out on your own? Hope you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. I would like to ask you to participate in our daily assessment test challenge. I post new questions every day in the Community tab of YouTube channel and give you an opportunity to answer it and try it. And I post answer in comments next day. So please make sure to check it out to test your knowledge. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. A lot of times you might get a question on how to sort data in Excel from smallest to largest. For example, you might be presented with the data set which shows student names and their grades on different subjects. Here on the screen we see the grades in physics math, chemistry, and biology. And we need to sort this data set based on the student names. To accomplish this task, we need to select the data set and in the Home tab, navigate to Sort and Filter and select Sort A to Z. This will rearrange the data in the alphabetical order based on the student name. An alternative solution might be to use Custom Sort. To use custom sort, you need to select the data, navigate to the Home tab, and then select Sort and Filter, and then Custom Sort. Here you are presented with the screen where you need to select the column by which you are going to be sorting, and then select the order. In my case, I am going to select the column as Math Grade, and then in the order, I am going to select Smallest to Largest. Once I clicked OK, you see that the data set was rearranged from smallest to largest based on the values in the math column. Let's recap. To sort the data in Excel, you need to either use sort smallest to largest or custom sort functions. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is an interesting question you frequently see on the test. You are presented with a set of data and you need to add serial number column to this data using Excel formula. In our case, we are presented with student grades information. And for each student, we need to add a serial number. Do you know how to do it? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can complete the steps in the simulator. And I am going to move forward and reveal the solution for you. The first step here is to add a new column. Assuming that we will be adding the data to the left of the first column, the easiest way to add a new column is to do a right mouse click, click Insert, and this action adds a new column. We will give new column a name serial number and extend the column so we can see the data. The first number in the series, in my case, will be 1, but you can use pretty much any number. In the next row, we will add a formula, and our formula will be very simple 
we will add the value of the first serial number, plus one, or you can use any different formula depending on your business circumstances. Once you hit enter, you see that the second value is two. And now I can expand this formula for the entire data set and you will see that the numbers are increasing. Keep in mind that this number might be different from the actual row ID. And if you use different formula, the number will be different for sure. And then the last step here is to apply formatting to the column. To do this, we need to select the column, navigate to the Home tab, select Format Painter, and then apply it to the newly created column. Very frequently on the test, you get a question about usage of formulas in Excel. And sometimes you get a questions on how to display data in the status bar. For example, let's look at the question how to display minimum, maximum, count, and average in Excel status bar. You are presented with the data set of the student grades, which displays student names and their grades in physics, math, chemistry, and biology. Do you know how to add auto calculations for their grades in the status bar? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and share the answer with you. To accomplish this task, as you might have guessed, all properties related to the status bar can be enabled by right mouse clicking on the status bar itself. This presents us with the formulas for average, count, numerical count, minimum, maximum, and sum. In our case, we need to select average, count, minimum, and maximum, and you will see that all these values now show on the status bar. Do you have an alternative way to solve it? Please make sure to post it in comments. Can you tell us how many questions did you answer correctly? Please make sure to post in the comment section of this video to share with others. And now let's continue to get you ready for the test. A lot of times you might be presented with the question that tests your knowledge of Microsoft Excel user interface. Let's look at the sample question from the recent test. How to move the data set three cells down and one cell to the left in Microsoft Excel efficiently? You are presented with the data set of the student names. It contains names of the students as well as their grades in physics, math, chemistry, and biology. Do you know the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and reveal the final answer to you. Obviously, there are multiple ways to move the data in Excel. One of the easiest ways is to select the data set and then in the Home tab, use the Cut function. Identify the new location by putting the cursor in the upper right corner of the new location and pasting the data in the new location. But the question is, is this way the most efficient way, as the question asks? Let me undo this operation by using the Undo button, and I'll show you another way which might be more efficient. I'm going to use the Escape button on the keyboard to unselect the range, select it again, and the trick here is when you move the cursor to the end of the range, you are able to drag and drop the range. I'm going to drag and drop it three cells down and one cell to the right and position it in the new location. Do you know any other solutions? Please make sure to share them in comments. Here's the question which tests your knowledge of modern Excel formulas. You are presented with the list of student names in the column A and you need to decide which Excel formula should you use to retrieve the value of the row with ID 7. The value in this row is Prisha Patel. You have four different choices to select the correct formula. Choice A, formula row. Choice B, formula find. Choice C, formula index. And choice D, formula match. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe 10 to 20 seconds. See if you can pause this video to come up with the right solution. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and share with you the correct solution to this problem. As you might have figured out, the correct formula is index. In fact, index returns a value of the element in the table 
or in the array selected by the row and column number indexes. When entering index formula, you need to enter the array and provide the row number. The column number is optional. In the case of this particular question, to retrieve the value of the row with ID 6, you need to enter the index formula and then select an array of values starting from the row with ID 2 and then enter the value 6 because our array of values starts with the actual values that was the title of this range. Once you hit enter, you see that the correct value was selected by the formula. Do you see any other solutions? Do you know any other formulas that will help accomplish this task? Please make sure to post them in comments. Here's the very interesting problem where you need to determine the value using index and match Excel formulas. Specifically, you need to determine the math grade for Prisha Patel. You're presented with the range of values which includes student name, physics, math, chemistry, and biology grades. And you need to enter the formula to calculate the value. Do you see the solution? Do you know how to solve it? Let's move forward and solve this challenge together. We can solve this challenge in two steps. In step one, we need to use the match formula to identify the ID for the row with Prisha's name. First, we need to select what we are looking for. In this case, we can either type the full name for Prisha or we can use asterisks and just type the first name. Second value for the match formula is the range. We need to select the range from A2 to A11. And third value, we need to specify what type of match. In our case, we will be doing exact match where we need to select the value of 0. Once completed, formula returns value of 6, which represents ID for the row where Prisha's name is located. Once we've identified the row, we need to find the second column in this row to return the math grade for Prisha. To do this, we start typing the formula select the range B2 to E11 to identify all the grades, then enter the match formula to help identify the row where Prisha's information is located. And then we enter the column ID. And looks like I mistyped the formula and entered extra apostrophe. Once I remove this extra apostrophe and hit enter, the correct value is returned, which is the math grade for Prisha. The final formula looks like this. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's an interesting question, which we started to see on the test more and more often. There are multiple hidden worksheets in the current Excel workbook. You need to demonstrate how you can unhide all the worksheets that contain string N2 in the title. And you need to use Excel simulator to complete the steps. Let me go ahead, move forward and reveal the solution for you. To accomplish this task, you need to right click on the sheets portion in Excel and select unhide. Once you do this, you see all hidden tabs or all hidden worksheets in Microsoft Excel. Our goal is to select all the worksheets that contain N2 in the title. You can hold the shift button and select four worksheets in my case. And once you do that, you can click OK. And you can see that now all the worksheets with the N2 in the title are visible. If you have an alternative solution to this challenge, make sure to post it in comments. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for all your endorsement, support and patronage. For additional helpful information, please make sure to check out links in the description. For detailed list of available resources, I encourage you to check out resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you know someone who would benefit from this content, please consider sharing the link. Please leave the feedback, corrections or suggestions in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.